Hey everybody, it's Derek Hobarton from CodeOpinion.com. What software architecture do you use? If I asked you this question, what would be your answer? I'd probably get some people saying clean architecture and definitely a lot of people saying microservices. But really, your software architecture isn't just a single architecture. In this video, I'm gonna describe how you can compose and mix and match different architectural styles that fit together to make your specific architecture. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. I love using analogies. Not really sure why, but when I was thinking of this video, I was trying to come up with an analogy. The first thing I thought of was a buffet-style restaurant. But Alex, who's a member of my channel, who's on my Discord server, pointed out kind of a similar idea of a restaurant that's a la carte. So instead of ordering a meal that comes with, say, a super salad and a side dish, instead, you're picking everything off the menu individually. So for thinking about architecture, our menu might look like this. These are just some of the popular ones that I've written that most people are probably familiar with. So maybe we have N-tier, clean architecture, onion architecture, layered, ports and adapter, hexagonal, vertical slices, event-driven, service-oriented architecture, monolith, and microservices. And you don't need to pick just one. This is a la carte. You can kind of mix and match and pick different architectural styles that fits best in your context. And the reason is, is because different architectures and different architectural styles have different focuses or different concerns. Some are more deployment and physical boundary concerns, while others are more technical and how you're organizing code and dealing with coupling while others are more focused on communication. So as an example, maybe you have a microservices architecture, and this is allowing you to have physical independent deployments per particular service boundary. But within those service boundaries, maybe you have clean architecture that you're using in all of them. Now, hang on, you might be saying, really? I'm using microservices, I have all these different microservices, and all of them are using clean architecture? Does that make sense? Maybe, maybe not, but you're starting to ask some good questions. Now let's use another example that I think is severely underrated and most people don't think of it that much, which is let's say you have a monolith and within that monolith, you're using clean architecture and you're using an event-driven architecture. I'll explain how this works. But beyond that, like I was saying, not everything's equal. If you have defined boundaries, even within your monolith, that means that you could be applying vertical slices as well. So what that would look like is if we have a monolith, let's say that's our dotted line on the outside here, that that's the actual executable, the process that's running. And there's gonna be some top level to this. It could be a web framework, could be something that's listening to the message broker, et cetera. But within that, we have well-defined boundaries. We have a boundary here that's on the left that has things like contracts that could be for messages. It has our implementation, which is actually the code that's actually running, the features that it provides. Let's say we have three different particular boundaries and they're leveraging some underlying database. From there, we also could be using an event-driven architecture, which allows these different boundaries to communicate with each other. So what this allows us to do is loosely couple between these different boundaries instead of having to call them directly in process. So what that may look like is, let's say we have, it's an HTTP API, we have a request come in to our host, to our web framework, and it directs that traffic to a particular boundary we do some interactions, some state changes with our database, but we want to publish an event. We want to tell those other particular boundaries, hey, this actually happened within my particular boundary. Something happened within our system. So from there, we can create a message. We can publish that message to the message broker in that exact same monolith, whether it be that same process, whether you have multiple different processes that are all still running that same code, that same monolith, we could have it consume that message and then direct that to the appropriate boundary that wants to listen to it. That means that our monolith in its entirety is the producer of messages and the consumer, but really more fundamentally, more micro than that, really we have these individual boundaries that are hosted within this monolith that are producing and consuming. Now, as I mentioned, different architectural styles have different concerns, and I need to jump back to the four plus one architectural view model to really illustrate this. When I was talking about having this monolith, that had three logical boundaries, this is kind of a different way of thinking of it, is that my logical view here is that's what I was talking about. I had three different logical boundaries that represented three pieces of functionality within our system. From there, we could have had all those three logical boundaries within our monolith, within the same Git repo, within the same 
project structure that we were opening up in our IDE or text editor, that could have been all the same way all together. And then we were physically deploying that as one executable. So maybe our development view and our physical view were exactly the same, but we actually had three different logical boundaries. So again, it isn't necessarily a one to one to one. Why that we lead to that is because you could think of splitting these logical boundaries off. Don't confuse logical boundaries with physical boundaries. So that means that if we had these three different logical boundaries, we could host two of them together and we could say, okay, maybe because, uh, because of load or different concerns, we're gonna carve one of those particular logical boundaries off and host it itself independently. So now do we still have a monolith or do we have more service oriented moving towards microservices? Because we have different physically deployed instances that are using a message broker to communicate asynchronously and we're loosely coupled. So are we still a monolith now or are we moving towards services? So what's also really popular is kind of remove that asynchronous messaging and move to something that's more request response RPC. I've done videos on why I think this is a terrible idea in a lot of situations, but it's still really popular. So again, check off that, those different boxes where now you're doing more request response and those types of patterns between say these different physically deployed hosts. And that could be over HTTP and HTTP API or gRPC. Now, as I mentioned at the very beginning, maybe you're doing clean architecture and vertical slice architecture or clean architecture in hexagonal architecture. How would that be possible? Well, if you're starting to find logical boundaries, that doesn't mean that each logical boundary needs to apply the same architectural pattern within it. That means that you could have some particular boundaries that are more using vertical slice architecture. Some boundaries you choose if they're different teams, maybe they prefer clean architecture. And that goes all the way down because then you can make localized decisions per boundary. So maybe for a particular set, you still have these two hosted together. That's the physical aspect of the physical view. And maybe we're just using relational database there, but we have this other boundary. This is a separate service, if you will, that it's using vertical slice architecture. And within it, maybe it's not using relational database. Maybe it's doing event sourcing and has an event store. Now I can hear people commenting and yelling already. You're overcomplicating it. Make it simple. It should just be simple. I'm not advocating using every architecture under the sun for no good reason. What I'm describing is you have options. You can check the different boxes and apply what's more appropriate to you. If that's just applying clean architecture and a monolith and that's it, then that makes sense. It doesn't necessarily need to be event driven and be clean architecture and doing vertical slices. No, it's use what's appropriate. Be pragmatic. When I was asking members of my channel on our private Discord server, kind of the suggestions around the analogy that I had about the buffet, Alex also made the comment to me of saying, make sure you don't overeat. And I thought this is hilarious. And I think it's exactly what I'm trying to convey right now is just because you have the options of doing all these different architectural styles doesn't mean you should pick things appropriately. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. If you want to chat with other software developers about architecture and design, you can join my channel, get access to a private Discord server. Check the links in the description on how to join. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.